fiery horse with the speed of light, a cloud of dust, and a hearty Hayo Silver, the Lone Ranger. Faithful Indian companion Tonto, the daring and resourceful masked rider of the plains, led the fight for law and order in the early western United States. Nowhere in the pages of history can one find a greater champion of justice. Return with us now to those thrilling days of yesteryear. From out of the past come the thundering hoofbeats of the great horse Silver. The Lone Ranger rides again. Mrs. Manley, a neighbor from a nearby ranch, stood at the bedside of the widow Jones and listened as the dying woman pleaded with her to take the widow's young son, Billy. After Mrs. Manley promised to take the boy for a short time, she reached out and patted the widow's hand, saying, I promised to take Billy as you asked, Sarah, but I'm sure it isn't going to be necessary. You'll get well again and... Sarah. Sarah. Doctor. Doctor, you'd better come in. What is it, Mrs. Manley? Well, the, the way she looks, Doctor. I think she's unconscious. Oh. Well, it's all over, Mrs. Well, Manley. The widow Jones is dead. Dead? Oh, poor Sarah. Uh, come, let us step into the next room. <coughs> she asked to speak to you alone. Did she manage to tell you what was on her mind? Yes, Doctor. Yes, she did. It... It was about her boy, Billy. Poor lad. He's an orphan now. I know. This will be a shock to him. Are there any close relatives who might take the boy? He has a grandmother in Dry Rock, south of here. But she always resented the marriage of her son to Sarah. And has had very little to do with Billy or his mother since the boy's father died. I see. But under the circumstances, I'm sure she'd be willing to take the boy. After all, he is her grandson. Sarah told me Billy's grandmother is very mean-tempered. She felt that the boy would lead a very unhappy life with the old woman. That's why Sarah wanted me to take Billy for a while. At least long enough for him to get over the shock of her death. Yeah, poor woman. Her only thought seems to have been for her son. Yes. Yes, it was, Doctor. Sarah's whole life was wrapped up in that boy. Uh, you have a boy, don't you, Mrs. Manley? Yes. My boy Ted is about Billy's age. I'll keep my promise and take Billy a while. Perhaps having another boy around will... will soften the blow of losing his mother. Uh, you must have been a good friend to the widow Jones to make such a promise. I'm sure it's best for the boy right now. Sarah and I were good friends, Doctor. Have you known her long? Has she lived around here very long? 
Sarah and her husband lived on this ranch until almost 12 years ago. Her husband died just before my son was born. I remember it so well because no doctor was available. Sarah practically saved my life. They stopped the stage out on the trail and brought in a doctor at the last minute. He was on his way to St. Louis. I see. I was seriously ill and I remembered little. But when he saw I was out of danger, he went on. Sarah nursed me until I was well again. I noticed her boy when I came in. Yes. Right after my boy Ted was born, Sarah left here. She said she was expecting a child. While she was away, her boy Billy was born. She came back here two years ago. Yeah, too bad the father didn't live to see his son. Billy seems like a nice boy. Yes. Yes, he is. I understand he and my boy were born a few months apart. Well, Doctor, I'll find the boy and take him home with me as I promised. I'll break the news to him as gently as I can. <laughs> It was three weeks later when the doctor decided to drop by the Manly Ranch and see how Billy Jones was getting along. He was in the large living room talking to Mrs. Manley. How's Billy getting on, Mrs. Manley? I suppose with two boys you have your hands full. <laughs> yes, doctor, I really do. Billy is a lovable boy and he should make a good playmate for my Ted. But Ted seems to resent any attention that's given to Billy and well, they get into frequent fights. I'm afraid I'll have to send Billy to his grandmother before long. Well, now, that's too bad. The widow Jones dreaded having the boy go to live there, but I suppose he'll have to sooner or later. You know, I'm awful hungry. Oh, well, Billy, how are you getting along here? I'm not Billy. My name's Ted Manley, and I live here. Yes, this is my own son, Doctor. Go into the kitchen, son, and get some milk. All right, Mom, and I want some bread, too. Funny. I could have sworn that was a Jones lad. Of course, I've seen him only a couple of times. The boys do look somewhat alike. I've thought of that before. But <laughs> naturally, I think my own boy is better looking. <laughs> of course. <laughs> Where's uh, Ted, Mother Manley? He's in the kitchen getting something to eat. I'm hungry, too. All right, you go along and eat with Ted. Yes, ma'am. I think the resemblance is remarkable. Hey, give me that. What? Oh. See what I mean, Doctor? I'd better go out and settle this before they start a real fight. That evening, after the boys were sleeping, Mrs. Manley sat down to have a serious talk with her husband. Buck. I'm afraid we're going to have to send Billy to his grandmother's sooner than we intended. Oh, now, Mary, what's the hurry? From what I hear of that old curmudgeon, the poor boy'd have a heck of a time. Buck, you're not around during the day. Billy and Ted go from one fight to another. They just don't agree on anything. <laughs> that sort of squabbling doesn't mean anything, Mary. It's good for him. I used to battle with my brother all the time. I'm sort of getting to like that Billy. Seems like my own boy at times. Well, just the same, now, I look, Mary, think we... Ted was born while I was away on a cattle drive. And if it hadn't been for Sarah, well, maybe you or Ted might not be here now. Let's keep him a while longer anyway. All right. But it's mighty trying to hear them at each other's throat every five minutes. I'm bringing a couple of ponies over from the well... Bar X spread tomorrow. Just borrowed them for the boys to ride. That ought to keep them quiet a while. Oh, Buck, you're too soft-hearted, but... But I like you for it. The boys will get a surprise when they see those ponies. They'll get along better, perhaps, after the ponies arrive. The following morning, the two boys stood beside Mrs. Manley on the ranch house porch. Their faces were aglow with excitement as they waited. How long do we have to wait, Mom? Now, Ted, don't be so impatient. Why can't you wait quietly like Billy does? But it isn't his father who's bringing well, something to show us. So that's why Billy doesn't get tired of waiting. Ted, don't say that. But it's true. Daddy's my father. He told me I could... 
I could call him Dad sometimes, if I wanted to. But he isn't really. Ted, stop at this instant or I'll send you inside. But, Mom, why should Billy... Quiet, get... Ted. I wish he was my real dad. I never remember having him. Well, both of you, close your eyes quick. Your father's coming with the surprise. Hey, boys, look here. Ponies! Oh, are, are you going to let us ride them? <laughs> sure. Come on down here. Now, take it easy, boys. You'll scare them away. <laughs> <laughs> I want this one. Oh, hold on, Ted. You wait till we see Oh, Jeff. it's all right, Dad Manley. Let Ted have that one. This one is nice, too. All right, then. Yeah. Now, hit leather, both of you. Let's see how you ride them. Steady, boy. I'll ride better than you, Billy. Dad showed me how to ride. Steady, boy. Uh, well, I didn't have anyone to show me how, but I can ride pretty well. Now, be careful, both of you, and don't go very far. <laughs> All right, you cowpokes, hit the trail. <laughs> come on there, get out. Get up there, boy. Get out. Come on. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> Look at him go, would you? <laughs> they certainly are happy together right now. Yep. Maybe we'd better keep Billy here all the time, Mary. We'll wait a while before we make a serious decision like that, Buck. Come on in and have some coffee. <laughs> Go any farther, Ted. Maybe we ought to turn back now. Oh, you're always worrying. Hey, look, there's a creek just ahead. Come on, get up, boy, get out. Get up there, boy. Whoa, 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 whoa there. there boy. Golly, that looks cool. Steady, steady. Uh, uh, let's go swimming. Well, we'd better not. Steady there, boy. Uh, we've come a long way from home, and anyway, there's a curtain there. It looks strong, too. <laughs> Yes, you can't swim. That's why you won't go in. But I'm going in. Well, I can swim, but I'm not going in. Scared cat. <laughs> I'm almost ready. Well, I'll watch the ponies. They might leave us if we don't watch them. And you better not swim long either. I'm going to get a running start and dive right in. Hey, you better not dive in, Ted. You don't know what might... <laughs> Here I go. Ted, where are you? Billy, my head, I... <laughs> He must have hit his head on a rock. Ted, hold on. I'm coming. Ted! Hey, Ted! Help, Billy. Help, Buck. He's carried down the street. I have to get him. Billy, Just got him. Meantime, two horsemen leisurely followed the trail along the bank of the creek. They were the Lone Ranger and his Indian companion, Tonto. We'll uh, soon be at the mission, Tonto. There's much farther. Ah, it'd be good to see Padre again, Kimasabi. Yes, he'll be expecting us. I remember the last time we were... Who's over? Who's got no father? Tonto, I heard someone calling. Ah. That cry came from down the creek. Come on, Silver. Get him off his couch. Look, Kimasabi. There's a boy clinging to a rock in midstream. Ah. ah. Him holding someone else. Water deep there, current strong. I know. Hold over, hold. Easy, Scout. Easy, Scout. He loses his hold. They'll be dashed to pieces over the falls. Uh, it's not good. Here, take my guns. I'm going after them. Uh, me come too. No, you move along the bank. Keep your lariat ready. Uh, I must get to them. Help! Help! I'm slipping! Hold on! Although the old ranger had entered the stream above the position of the boys in the water, he had to fight the strong current to keep from being carried past them. With long, powerful strokes, he gradually made his way until finally he reached out and grasped the rock Billy clung to. I can't hold on. I... You're holding another boy. Yes, he, he's hurt. I can't let him drown. I'll get you to shore somehow. I don't be frightened. I'll hold him. You grasp my shoulder. Yeah, yes, sir. Uh, here he is. He slipped away. He's gone under. Cling to the rock quick. I'll get him. No, come back. You'll both be carried over the falls. The curtain falls on the first act of our Lone Ranger adventure. Before the next exciting scenes, please permit us to pause for just a few moments.
continue. As the boy Billy tried to transfer the unconscious Ted to the Lone Ranger, Ted suddenly slipped away into the current, leaving Billy clinging to the rock in midstream. The Lone Ranger immediately dove after the other boy. Come back! You both drowned! I must find him. The masked man dove underwater and a moment later appeared on the surface holding Ted Manley. The current had carried them both downstream toward the falls and it was too strong for him to hold Ted and swim back to the rock where Billy clung. The Lone Ranger, holding Ted's head above water, struck out for the shore. <laughs> then he heard Tonto call out. Me. The rope! The rope! Throw it, Tonto! The stalwart Indian stood a few seconds, gauging the distance, then threw the snaking rope, which landed within reach of his masked friend. The Lone Ranger grasped it and quickly looped it about Ted and himself. A few minutes later, with Tonto's help, he reached the bank with the boy. Throw the lariat to the other boy, Tonto. Hurry before he slips from the rock. Uh, boy! Ted! A few minutes more found Billy pulled to safety onto the bank, where he lay exhausted and gasping for breath. Tonto and the Lone Ranger turned their attention to giving first aid to the exhausted Billy and the unconscious boy, Ted. You'll soon be all right, son. Tonto, how about the unconscious boy? Uh, him get cut on head. But me think it'd be all right with plenty good care, Kimasabi. Ted, where's Ted? Don't let... Easy, easy, son. Ted's going to be all right. Don't worry. The ponies, our ponies. We'll find your ponies. Now, you lie quiet and rest a while. Uh, Kimasabi. Yes. This one, him breathe better now. But him need looking after. I'll care for the boys while you go upstream and get the ponies. And we'll take them where they'll be properly cared for. The mission is close. Ah, uh, it good take them to mission. Hardly see them get well. Me go get ponies. And we come back to mission. The Lone Ranger and Tonto took the two boys to the mission where the Padre made them comfortable. The boys were put on cots in one of the bedrooms and were soon sleeping normally. After a couple of hours, the Padre and the Lone Ranger went in to observe the boys and found them awake. Well, my son, how do you feel? I, I feel all right now, sir. Where are we? You're at the mission. This is the Padre. Oh, Billy told me not to go into the water. I hit my head when I dove. Billy saved me. That masked man saved both of us. We'll have to get word to your people. Oh, uh, what's your name, son? I'm Ted Manley, sir. Buck Manley's boy? Yes, Padre. You're fortunate, my son, to have such a brave boy as Billy for a brother. Oh, he's not my brother. Uh, not your brother? No, sir. He's Billy Jones. He's staying with us for a while since his mom died. Oh, I... I understand. But I wish we were brothers now. I wouldn't fight with him anymore. He saved me. Well, I wish we were too. Someday soon they'll send me to Grandmother Jones. And I don't want to go. I wish I never had to go there. Sometimes, son, our creator moves in strange ways. Perhaps you'll not have to leave the ones you seem to love so much. I'd uh, better send Toto to notify Mr. Manley that the boys are here and safe, Padre. Yes, of course. But before you do that, amigo, I have something to tell you. Yes. Rest now, boys. We'll return later with food. Padre, I was under the impression that those boys were brothers. There's such a strong resemblance. My son... I have a story to tell you that may clear up a great deal of misunderstanding. Yes. About 12 years ago, a ranch hand from the Manly Spread arrived at the mission asking for aid. I returned to the ranch with him to do what I could. After hearing the Padre's story, the Lone Ranger decided to ride with Tonto to the Manly Ranch. It was dusk when they stopped before the ranch house. Who's it? Who's it? Who's it? Who's it? Who's it? You wait here, Tonto. Uh -huh. Mr. Manley? Yes, yes. Come in. Mask, what do you want? I uh, came about your son and the other boy. They were nearly drowned, but they're safe now. Nearly drowned? Why, they were horseback riding. They weren't near the water. You're up to something. What is it? You're wrong, Mr. Manley. Both boys are at the mission recuperating from an accident in the water. Hold on, now I see it. You picked up those boys and recognized one of them as my son. 
You came here to ask Ransom before I can get him back. The masked man suddenly took advantage of a lax moment on Manley's part and reached out, grasping the wrist of the rancher's gun arm. All right, drop that gun. Drop it. Well, that's better. Now perhaps you'll listen while I explain about your son. Buck, what's going on? I heard the... Oh, what's that masked man doing here? I figured this outlaw's holding our boy and Billy, that's what. And he had the nerve to come here and ask for ransom money. Oh, oh wait, uh, please let me explain. Briefly, the Lone Ranger told what had happened and concluded by saying, Both boys are at the mission under the care of the Padre. They're both all right now. Oh, those poor boys, we must go to them. I'm not so sure this stranger's telling the truth. How do I know that he You'll is? You'll have to take my word for it right now. I'd reach, mister. Quick. Good work, men. He didn't see you come in the open door behind him. What's wrong, boss? Looks like we caught an outlaw. Yeah, keep him covered. Don't worry. Mary, get the rest of the hands here and have one of them ride for the sheriff. But, Buck, what he told us about the boys and all may be true. We'd better listen you drop to drop guns. Look, an Indian in the doorway. He's holding two guns on us. Yeah, better drop the guns, boys. Please. If they're shooting, someone will be killed. Buck, perhaps you're wrong about the masked man. I explained why I came here, Mrs. Manley. There's no need for gunplay. You'll find the two boys at the mission, as I've already told you. But that doesn't explain that mask, mister. He must have Yes. Maybe it better you come now. Yes, we'll leave. Can we try to stop him, boss? I wouldn't if I were you. Easy, man. They have the upper hand right now. They're not convinced I told the truth, Toto. You'll have to move fast. Come on. Uh -uh. Easy, fella. Easy, scout. Easy, fella. Come on, sir. Get him up, scout. Shortly after the Lone Ranger and Toto galloped away from the Manly Ranch House, Buck Manley drove the buckboard around from the barn and stopped in front of the house to pick up his wife, Mary. Oh, hold there. Oh. Ready, Mary? Yes, I'm ready. I'll help you to the seat, ma'am. Thank you. We must hurry, Buck. If the boys are at the mission, as the masked man said, they may be hurt. Uh, as far as I'm concerned, that masked army was lying. But we'll go to the mission and make sure. What if he was lying, boss? The youngsters aren't at the mission. By Jimmy, we'll trail him and the Indian until we find him. And if any harm has come to the boys, we'll gun those outlaws right in their tracks. Whether you believe it or not, I think we'll find the boys as the masked man said we would. Now drive on or I'll take the reins myself. All right, all right. See you later, Fred. Get up there. Get up. It was later that night when Buck Manley and his wife Mary arrived at the mission and were met at the door by the Padre. Padre... I'm Mrs. Manley, and this is my husband. We were told that my son and another boy are here. Your boys are here and what? safe. What? Come right in. Well, then the masked hombre was telling the truth after all. I feel so ashamed, Buck, the way we treated him. My masked friend understands. He has a forgiving nature. Moreover, you owe him a great debt, my friends. You see, he saved both the boys from death in the rushing water. Oh, Buck. Tarnation, take it. Why didn't he say so? He tried to tell us, but you wouldn't listen. Uh, no matter, since there's no harm done. The boys, Padre, where are they? We must... Before you go in to see them, there's a story you must hear, my friends. And the one who should tell you is the man who saved them, my masked friend. I'll call him. Will you come in, my son? Good evening, Mrs. Manley and Mr. Manley. Uh, say now, I guess there's things I <laughs> ought to say. Forget what happened at the ranch. I realize you were upset. The Padre says you have something to tell us. Yes, uh, something very important, Mrs. Manley. You see, Billy saved Ted. What? He held him up until I could reach them. Well, uh, I'll be darned. Mary, we really ought to keep that boy all the time. I think you will keep him. You see, Billy is really your own son. What? Hold on now. I'm mighty fond of Billy, but when you say that he... He speaks the truth, my son, my friends. Billy and Ted are twins. Twins? But I... Listen, listen, please. When the boys were born, Mrs. Jones was your only attendant. The Padre made a short visit to the ranch. You were in a critical condition. Twins had been born. The doctor who was brought from the stage was known to the Padre. Today, he verified the fact that twin boys were born to you, Mrs. Manley. But uh, the doctor is somewhere in St. Louis. How could he... After the padre told me the story this afternoon, I used a new and quick method of telegraph. Well, this is the reply I picked up a short time ago. Uh, see, I recall the incident when I was asked to leave the stage and attend Mrs. Manley 12 years ago. Twin boys were born. 
I left before Mrs. Manley regained consciousness. Oh. A Mrs. Jones was in attendance. Signed, Dr. Norton. Then, then Sarah Jones took one of my boys to, to raise as her own. Yes. Evidently, the death of her husband a month before had affected her. She took Billy from you. Then that's why she made me promise to keep Billy a while. She hoped we'd grow to love him and keep him. I'm sure that is what she hoped. Oh, my, my poor boy. To think that we no almost... No wonder they, they look so much alike. They... we better get to see them, Mary. They're waiting to see you. And you have the news to break to Billy. Come, I'll take you to them. My sons, you have visitors for whom you've been waiting. Mom and Dad, golly, I'm glad to see you. Uh, what about you, Billy? Oh, I'm glad to see you, too. Awfully glad. But, well, you're not really my mom and dad, so... Oh, but we are, son. We what? are. Huh? We found you at last. But now we know that you're Ted's real brother and, and our son. Honest? Are you sure? Yes. Yes, darling. It's really true. You'll be ours always. Golly, I... I have a brother. Yep, he's your twin brother. He was lost a long time, but, but now he's... Heaven back. is due thanks for returning a lost lamb to the fold. Billy, my son, I'm sure there's great happiness in store for you from now on. We'll sure be one happy family, Padre. <laughs> if that masked man hadn't yeah. saved us, I wouldn't have found out that you're my mom and dad. Your bravery in saving your brother was rewarded. Billy... My brave little son. We'll be so happy together. And, and we'll never fight either. <laughs> I wonder. Oh, that masked stranger. He's done so much, and we owe him so much in, in the way of apologies and thanks. Padre, who is he? He and Tonto have left quietly. He needs neither apologies nor thanks. Your newfound happiness is his reward. You see, my friends, he's the Lone Ranger. This is a feature of The Lone Ranger Incorporated, created by George W. Trendle, produced by Trendle Campbell Enterprises, directed by Charles D. Livingston, and edited by Fran Stryker. The part of The Lone Ranger is played by Brace Beamer. Uh -huh.